In this screencast, we're going to talk about Fischer projections and how they're used in carbohydrate chemistry. Initially, we're going to talk about the aldotrioses. So this is a classification of carbohydrates that we can use that will help us determine what type of sugar we're dealing with. Aldo comes from an aldehyde functional group. Triose is a three carbon sugar. We're going to first examine the following carbohydrate. So this is an aldotriose. In a Fischer projection, the convention is that the most oxidized carbon is carbon 1, and it's at the top of the chain. And then you number down accordingly. So there's our three carbon chain. Carbon 1 is an aldehyde for our aldotriose. This specific sugar is plus glyceraldehyde. Let's recall what this plus means. So that comes from polarimetry. And it's basically the sign in which this molecule will rotate plane polarized light. So plus means dextrorotatory, so that means clockwise. One thing the Fischer projection is also useful for is determining R or S stereochemistry. So that's a skill that we'll want to have in assigning R or S for each stereogenic center. In this triose, only C2 is a stereogenic center. So recall that in a Fischer projection, where the horizontal and vertical lines meet, that's a carbon atom. The horizontal line is defined as being projected out towards us. So those two groups are coming out towards us. The vertical lines are projected behind us, and I'll abbreviate the aldehyde as CHO. So now that we have some, some stereochemical features drawn, let's go ahead and use the kahn ingold prelog rules to determine whether C2 is R or S. In those rules, we're going to look at the carbon and its four substituents. The lowest priority substituent is typically hydrogen, and this is based on atomic number. If we compare the other three groups, we have carbon, oxygen, and carbon. So carbon is going to get priority one. Now to distinguish between the remaining two carbons, we have to look at what is bonded to those carbons. The aldehyde it is equivalent to having two oxygens. This CH2OH has two hydrogens and one oxygen. So therefore this is going to have a priority of two and this will be three. If we make a wheel of one, two, and three, we can see that we're going in this direction. So that's counterclockwise, which would be S. However, the lowest priority group is coming towards us, so we have to reverse our initial um, decision there. So this is actually going to be R. So R plus glyceraldehyde. So remember that this designation comes from the kahn ingold prelog rules and tells us the stereochemistry of that center. So I'm going to go ahead and draw the mirror image stereoisomer of this. And we'll use the red dotted line as a mirror plane. So this is a mirror 
and I'm going to draw the mirror image of this compound. So the OH is going to be on the inside, the H will be on the outside. So this is going to be equivalent to carbon, hydrogen projected out towards us, hydroxyl group projected out towards us, aldehyde group proceeding away from us, in the primary alcohol at C3, also behind the board. Let's go ahead and, and prove to ourselves that the enantiomer is going to have the opposite CIP designation. OH is 1, hydrogen is 4, aldehyde again is 2, alcohol is 3. So initially we're going in the clockwise direction, which would be R. But since the lowest priority group is projected towards us, we reverse that to get S. So if we go ahead and name this enantiomer, this is going to be S. Since this is the exact enantiomer of this, the, the sign in which it rotates plane polarized light is going to be opposite as well. So recall that with enantiomers, the only physical property that distinguishes them is the manner in which they rotate plane polarized light. So plus is equal to dextrorotatory, minus is equal to levorotatory. So also keep in mind that the CIP designation, R, has no physical relationship to the polarimetry sign. And finally, one last important thing to point out about sugars in general. So we're going to use the terms D and L. So in the penultimate carbon bearing the hydroxyl group, so in this case C2, if this OH group is to the right on a Fischer projection, this is given the designation D. And the penultimate carbon on the enantiomer is to the left. This is given the designation L. We'll look at more examples of D and L and how that's useful in determining the structure of a carbohydrate from the name.